Welcome on Speak Your Mind. I'm your host, Shami Lochanlal, on Goal FM Speak Your Mind. Just recently, after the announcement of the 2017 and 2018 national budget, we've been dis- uh, discussing with, with other ministries and the CEOs on how this budget is going to help the citizens of Fiji and how is this budget going to help Fiji overall. And today on my show, I have uh, the CEO of Fiji Commerce Commission, Joel Abraham. I welcome, welcome you on the show and thank you for being on the show, Joel. Uh, thank you, Shami. And I think after the announcement of this 2017-2018 national budget, uh, CEO, uh, uh, the Commerce Commission has been pretty busy. And in the budget, it was announced that the Fiji Commerce Commission has been given more powers. What are these new powers uh, which has been vested on Commerce Commission? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, well, Shami, uh, when you talk about uh, new powers, it's uh, uh, to do with two things. One is to regularize the powers that the Commerce Commission currently has. Because currently we look at monitoring uh, items that are under price control uh, and non-price control items we do monthly surveys to ensure that uh, we understand uh, what is the uh, prices of goods in the market. Mm -hmm. Uh, The major concern I think in the budgetary process was that uh, duty reductions are being made by government. Uh, Last year there was a VAT reduction. Unfortunately, the retail prices do not reflect these reductions. Mm-hmm. So while government is uh, doing a lot to try and ensure that uh, the prices paid by consumers is uh, reduced, mm-hmm. that affordability levels are increased, what happens is uh, somebody in the middle is uh, trying to uh, bite and keep the bigger slice of the pie. When you say that the, 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 the prices on items where that is reduced the consumer is paying more than what he or she should be paying. Yes, it's uh, because of the because no one is monitoring, or there hasn't been a proper monitoring system, or the law hasn't been enforced. Well, I, I give you two examples. Uh, one, you talk about outboard motor engines, right? This is something our uh, people use in the maritime regions or in the coastal regions. Uh, earlier this year, we were looking at uh, doing some preliminary uh, assessments. We found that. Uh, an engine could be got into the country for about four thousand mm-hmm. dollars. It's being sold for about twenty five thousand. That's huge. Yes. Huge demarcation. <laughs> uh, similarly, bus chassis uh, bought in for forty five thousand, and these are being sold to bus companies for about one hundred and ten thousand dollars. And this was something that the honourable uh, minister of economy uh, also expressed uh, earlier this year when he was uh, visiting some second hand motor vehicle dealers, and he said, mm-hmm. you know, these things are concerning." And uh, the uh, the other to answer the other part of your question on why why has this become a problem? Mm. Well, uh, what has happened is uh, the Commerce Commission is there. We look at uh, prices of goods and services. We ensure that the prices being charged are supposed to be correct. Right. Mm-hmm. Our primary focus has been on price control goods. Mm-hmm. And uh, I give you an example. There's about forty thousand line items, forty thousand different items that a supermarket would have. Mm-hmm. The Commerce Commission looks at regulating some of these items which are considered necessities. Then there are hardware uh, companies that have another 40 or 50 mm-hmm. or so thousand line items. Mm-hmm. So if you take it across various industries, uh, you're talking about quite a large number of items that need to be monitored. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, there has been some challenges as far as uh, powers to obtain certain information. Mm-hmm. And that is what is uh, what has been done in this budget is uh, to empower the Commerce Commission to have the legislative backing to be able to go in and obtain those information right from the source. Mm. For the first time, uh, we've been uh, also given uh, the um, uh, mandate to go and uh, get information from FRCA records directly. So uh, import data, what is the landed cost uh, that is uh, uh, there in the uh, custom system? which will show what is the imported price, uh, what was the freight that was paid, what are some of the other charges that are incurred, what is the duty, what was the duty before and what mm-hmm. is the duty now. So how will you take this uh, this information, uh, which I know that the Commerce Com- 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 Commission and Fiji Revenue Custom Services, which is yep. their new name, you will be working together. So after taking all this information, which is some private information, how yep. will you then, then work uh, with the traders? Yes, uh, I think uh, the uh, Honorable Attorney General uh, actually was uh, quite clear when he said uh, now the private sector will have to justify their prices. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people have misconstrued this to say, oh, there will be too much regulation in the market and this is not good. 
and I was just listening into some uh, speeches uh, in in Parliament yesterday, and uh, some members were making comments about oh, this sector is already regulated, uh, so as to uh, try to uh, guide people's thinking that. Uh, regulation is a bad thing that you know that some industries are being killed off because of regulation that is totally baseless and it's not true how what? how would you justify that it's totally baseless well uh, one because when uh, regulation uh, came in into the food sector in 2010 2011 people said price control is going to kill the industry off mm -hmm. the supermarkets will close down even mm, some of the supermarkets removed items of the shelf and they said we can't sell it will Seven years now, you see how many new supermarkets are being opened, yes. right? Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, you go around the Suva, greater Suva area, you'll see investment after investment after investment, which only tells you that the climate to make investment is good. Mm -hmm. So that is how I say that the arguments are baseless to say regulation will kill off the industry. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the shipping sector. You're saying, uh, oh, entire island shipping is being regulated and they're being. Uh, uh, they're being contracted and uh, the sector is uh, doesn't have enough room to move. Mm -hmm. But then you have uh, people, good people like Mr. George Gounder who's uh, got in now uh, his fourth vessel in. So if the market is not that good to operate in, why are people making investments? The, the reason is they're making investments because the market is giving them adequate returns to make investments. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is a simple, that's why I say it's baseless. Okay. So uh, let's talk about how will the Fiji Commerce Commission carry out more effective price surveillance because uh, we have found and, and um, Consumer Council and uh, Fiji Commerce Commission has also brought to light mm. that uh, the items which uh, is included in the in VET reduced, which falls under the VET reduction prices, mm. but the consumers are being cheated, right? Mm. They are paying more for that for that item. So, uh, uh, how will you uh, uh, s survey the prices effectively? Well, uh, uh, to be honest, I uh, now uh, thinking about uh, the strategy that we will use. I would rather say, you know, we like to have the element of surprise on that one, really? <laughs> so that uh, uh, we do not want to disclose the strategy we will use. However, uh, the strategy, uh, the elements of the strategy is quite simple. Mm -hmm. uh, what we will do is. Uh, Go get the import data from uh, the FRCES or the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority. Mm -hmm. We already have started work on this pre-budget. Okay. We've already got retail prices for a lot of these items before budget. Mm -hmm. So we know what the market conditions were before the budget. And now we know there's reductions post, uh, I mean, in the budget announcement. So what needs to be seen is what would be the retail prices after budget. Yeah. So if you're able to get source data from uh, FRCA, and compare it with the retail data we have, we will be able to fill in the gaps and say, you know, hang on, somebody is actually making more than they're supposed to. As much as we want you to reveal this after the break, we'll try to convince you to tell us <laughs> on that. But we'd like uh, you to tell us, Ki, like you just said, that market conditions before and after. Yeah. We'd like to know more about that and the fact that will it invade the privacy of the traders? You can also uh, call us, our listeners on Gold FM. Uh, on 3220906 and 3220900 and if you're a trader or or a um, or an owner of, of a supermarket or a sector please feel free to call for any questions we'll take a short break and we'll be back right away <laughs> Welcome back on Speak Your Mind, and my guest is uh, Joel Abraham, the CEO of, of uh, Commerce Commission. Joel, we were talking about um, uh, the market conditions before and after which yeah. Commerce Commission is going to um, monitor. And you also mentioned about some items which is on the shelves. So what was the difference like? You did gauge the difference? Was it drastic? As look. in prices? Uh, well, currently uh, those things are under uh, investigations. So for me, it would be premature to disclose anything because uh, eventually, uh, I think as part of the uh, amendments that are going to be tabled through to Parliament is uh, there's increase in fines for the Commission. So mm -hmm. uh, and there's increase in enforcement powers as well. Mm -hmm. And part of which will uh, ensure either we will fine people or we'll take them to court or. We will use the mechanism that FRCS has to impose fines. 
and uh, we do not want to jump to the verdict of somebody's guilty before uh, for, for for listeners point of view yeah. for for they benefit because i i'm also a consumer right yes. so if i if you if like you said the market conditions before and after and the, the price surveillance that you'll be monitoring closely which means that in the past the commerce commission or um, maybe consumer council or fiji uh furka right yeah. they did not have the the empowerment or the enforcement in place so does it mean that i as the consumer has been robbed much oh uh, well uh, yes and no uh, uh, again i would say but uh, that it still remains to be seen but to answer your question i'd uh, probably give you an example that mm-hmm. would give uh, some indication to viewers and uh, this is an example uh, that will show the magnitude of the problem in the market right, right. so uh, we looked at this particular example of uh, condensed milk mm-hmm. right and uh, usually we see during times uh, festive times the price is around 8 dollars mm-hmm. uh, so what we did is we went and talked to uh, a particular supermarket a few supermarkets and uh, with one particular one we said can you source this at a cheaper price mm-hmm. same brand same everything same destination market as well right uh sorry same source market as well mm-hmm. so they went over to australia spoke to one of the largest uh, supermarket chains there woolworths that buys this particular condensed milk from the manufacturer and uh, they actually uh, looked at the pricing point that they would be able to sell it at a 20% markup in fiji they're looking at $3 as opposed to $8 that is already being sold mm-hmm. so the question then is if you can bring it and make 20% and sell it off at $3 who is making all this money mm-hmm. uh, by selling it at $8 and so who who is making the money that is what remains to be seen and with the powers that has been vested and uh, i think government has rightfully uh, looked at the problem and this is not in uh, not something that uh, uh, has been done just overnight and mm-hmm. say you know let's give the commerce commission powers because uh, we think it's a problem no it's something that uh, i think if you would go back to the previous budgets uh, the honorable prime minister was the first one that actually announced this and he said he had commissioned a task force mm-hmm. uh, the uh, permanent secretary for the ministry of industry and trade the ceo for frca and uh, the permanent secretary for Mini- then it was ministry of finance and they were to actually look at what are the systems that is required to fix this so this has been something in the making it has not been something that we've just come up with mm-hmm. so it has taken uh, we've looked at how we can uh, do this we looked at going into mous and then we found out that there were a lot of constraints in actually administering this because the market is huge yeah. right mm-hmm. as i said previously you talk about one supermarket having 40000 items by at least six, uh, six supermarkets right they is talking about 240000 different line items mm-hmm. and if you put this in one sheet actually going through 240000 different items is in itself a mammoth task it is how how will commerce commission manage with this i mean do you have enough uh, power manpower to do this and how long will it take you to implement this yes well uh, what we have done is we've actually strategized right uh, we've gone back and we've looked at what are some of the fast moving items so the fast moving items we looked at the turnover of sales and we said okay if these are the fast moving items this would only mean that consumers are buying this more mm-hmm. if majority of the consumers are buying this particular good more this is what would uh, impact majority of the people right mm-hmm. so we are starting with that so that uh, we had to collect data over time and see uh, what are the goods that are being sold more by the supermarkets uh, surprisingly uh, there are a lot of fizzy drinks that top this list mm-hmm. but uh, what we'll do is we'll actually go and look at what are the goods that are sold more then we'll put it down into a list and then compare the import prices to the retail prices to see how many participants are in uh, in the sector sometimes there is the importer wholesaler distributor mm-hmm. retailer re wholesaler re retailer mm-hmm. so everybody tries to get in into the market to make their cut of it and eventually the poor consumer ends up paying more mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. the idea is to ensure that we have the most efficient system to get the good from uh, when it is imported or manufactured to the consumer right? mm-hmm. so we are also going to be asking when we say businesses need to justify they also need to justify if they using only one particular distributor mm-hmm. right why are using one particular distributor can this be sourced cheaper right mm-hmm. if yes why would you not want to source it cheaper will you be able to convince the traders to do that well, now we have powers to do so mm-hmm. so it is either you justify and say 
this is what I'm doing is right, mm-hmm. right? Or we draw a line and say the conduct itself is not correct. And if the conduct is not correct, then of course we can now apply the law. Previously we couldn't. Mm-hmm. So that is uh, uh, the added benefit with the uh, empowerment of the Commerce Commission. Well, consumers like you and I are going to benefit. We'll take yes. another short break and when we come back we'd like to uh, know does Fiji have bad uh, business practices and, and what are these practices, how big it is and back to other question that uh, uh, will we be invading traders privacy when it comes to Commerce Commission working uh, closely with getting the data as to uh, uh, monitoring effective prices on uh, goods. So do call us on Speak Your Mind if you have any questions. The number is 3220906 and 3220907. My guest is Joel Abraham, the CEO of Commerce Commission. I'd like to remind our listeners that Speak Your Mind is a talkback show where you, we encourage our listeners to call and ask questions. This is the only talkback show uh, where you are given that opportunity and that privilege to please do call and ask questions. Our telephone number is 3220906 and 3220907. We are talking with the Commerce Commission CEO. So, so Joel, we were talking about the fact that now that we have so many regulations in place to monitor prices on wet reduced items. Does that mean that Fiji had bad business practices? What are these practices and how big is the problem? Okay, uh, yes, uh, uh, maybe let me explain uh, it in a bit more detail. Mm-hmm. Uh, did uh, Fiji have uh, bad business practices? Uh, which market doesn't? Uh, there will always be elements in any market that will try and say, let me take the shorter route to uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> making more money. Then there are quite a few, uh, well, a lot of ethical traders in Fiji. Right? Uh, what happens is that the uh, highlights are only given to the ones that have been caught offending. Right? Mm-hmm. For every trader that is caught offending, there's probably 8 to 10 that is not actually doing it. You know, mm-hmm. There's a lot of traders that uh, are quite compliant. They will come on board and uh, assist the commission. And uh, I understand that uh, uh, traders will have an issue uh, with regards to uh, the commission looking into their books. Uh, but for traders that the commission already regulates, they're well aware of our confidentiality policies. They're well aware of our procedures. So it's uh, something that is quite inclusive. It's something that is uh, based off a dialogue system where we sit and we uh, talk to them. Even uh, the budget announcement talks about justification. So when we, uh, the whole process will uh, include that the Commerce Commission will actually go get its own data, look at certain things, and then we'll go back to the trade and say, look, you know, we've got this. What do you have to say for, it, uh, mm-hmm. for this? So it's either we ask you to uh, do the right thing or we will uh, have to involve or invoke the regulation or we will have to make necessary regulation mm-hmm. to ensure that you do the right thing. Mm-hmm. So it's not about just finding uh, and penalizing people or finding mm-hmm. anybody. Mm-hmm. That is not the intention. The intention is to ensure that uh, when government is passing down benefits to consumers, it, it, it goes to consumers. And uh, I've given three, uh, several examples. It, it is something that is widespread. Mm-hmm. One, because... People see it as a as a easy means, right, uh, uh, to make money. The other thing is uh, often traders, uh, when we have asked them, they think that this incentive is for them, mm-hmm. right? So they say, oh, this incentive is 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 for me. It's good for it's good for business. It's good for this. It's good for that. But uh, if you look at the budget uh, announcements, even previously by this government, it's always been people centric, right? Mm-hmm. Even the current budget, it's it's a people's budget. It's mm-hmm. meant to drive consumption. And to drive consumption means that, one, uh, you see uh, uh, initiatives like increasing the tax threshold. What that means is more money into people's pocket. Mm. Uh, zero bus fares uh, for school students, having the free milk program. Mm-hmm. There's uh, uh, providing so many other added benefits to various vulnerable uh, elements in our community and to parents. What this does is adds more money into your pocket. Yeah. And what government wants you to do is, one, you could do savings, and two, you would spend. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and when you spend you are actually driving and boosting the economy and that is why in line with this uh, culture of uh, putting more money into the people's pocket government is also working hand in hand in trying to boost small medium and micro enterprises mm-hmm. because these small medium and mi- micro enterprises are businesses owned by our everyday fijians so what this will actually do is it will help re- recycle the money within the country mm-hmm. and if government is doing that the whole idea is for this consumption to happen mm-hmm. and there are certain actors in the economy which are trying to stop this by saying how can i get rich quicker you know yeah. that is I'd, the problem i'd like to come back to my my question which i had asked earlier that how will fiji commerce commission carry out more effective price surveillance and uh, to ensure that vet reduced uh, items uh, are that we are not paying more for that so should the traders be concerned uh, is this going to invade their privacy Well, uh, they should not be concerned if they are doing everything what is, uh, which is right. If they are being ethical, no, uh, no reason to be concerned about. Mm-hmm. This is just an exercise to ensure that we are looking at. Uh, this is an oversight function, right? People should not confuse this with added regulation. Okay. Uh, regulation means to exert some sort of control over the market, right? Mm-hmm. We are not controlling the market. What we are doing is providing an oversight to say. if you as a consumer shami are going to buy something mm-hmm. of course you won't stand at the supermarket and check what the landed cost of this thing mm-hmm. and what the price is and that is why government has got the commerce commission as a state body yes. to ensure and i have given this example in various uh, consultation that i have recently had say somebody goes up to the fuel station and says hey can i have 10 dollars of fuel 20 25 dollars worth of fuel or full tank nobody says oh, what is the cost even to a certain extent i did a quick poll and i asked what is the cost per liter people even don't know what the cost per liter is mm-hmm. because people don't buy fuel like that so who actually checks the price at the pump is correct yeah. we do yeah. so that is exactly what we are going to do here we how will you do that will you be checking the cash registered with supermarkets and different businesses you see now what uh, there has been a linkage between the fiji revenue and customs service and the commerce commission what we will do is actually they have data that has import uh, data on one end through the customs side of business and then they have the returns that businesses lodge through the revenue side of it mm-hmm. right and what the commerce commission will actually do is be filling in the gap or going to the market and seeing if they are importing at this level and they are saying that we are pay, uh, we are making only this much right. what is the price they actually charging on the shelf mm-hmm. right what is the price they are charging what is the cost that they have incurred for any particular good so we'll be actually going in filling the gaps we'll get uh, data from frcs they are system right we will do a comprehensive market surveillance right this will also include a uh, a complaint system where we invite members of the public to come forward and to if they feel that they've been cheated or if they feel suspicious about any transaction right. they can lodge that complaint to us mm-hmm. we have done a pre budget survey we've studied what the importation cost have been before budget Mm-hmm. we've looked at what the markup has been before budget and the selling price before budget okay. and we'll do the same exercise after budget and we'll compare what the difference is okay we'll take another break and when we uh, come back we'd like to know that if someone is uh, caught breaching this law what will be the fine uh, and the consequences and also that the commission is going to work with the the economy ministry to set up an economic intelligence unit how is this going to work so we'll take a break and we'll be right back but please do call us on 3220906 and 3220907 remember speak your mind is a talk back show where we encourage our listeners to call and ask questions Welcome back on uh, Speak Your Mind, and uh, uh, we'll continue our talk with uh, Joel, the CEO of uh, Fiji Commerce Commission. So, if someone is caught uh, breaching this law, um, a trader or a supermarket owner, whoever, what will be the consequences? Uh, well, first of all, uh, we'll ask them why have you been doing this. Uh, one we have uh, realized in the but don't you think it would be rather stupid to ask them why have they been no, no, uh, l- let me finish mm. uh, we'll ask them because in the last 7 months we've uh, we've actually done something uh, which is a bit unorthodox mm-hmm. we actually looked at uh, we believe we are a firm believer and if you want something done ask nicely mm-hmm. and the commerce commission has seen an improvement in compliance by more than 20% 
Right. right? Because compliance is a behavioral issue. Right? If people are not doing something, uh, we need to find out why they're not doing it. Because I believe personally, you could find somebody today and then go back and do the same thing tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then it just be about catching them and finding them and catching them and finding them. What we want is, we want the the mo- motivation behind this whole exercise is to ensure that when duty reductions are done or when government passes these initiatives to benefit consumers, this actually pass down, right? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, this will become a very intensive exercise. Year in, year out, it will be playing police and robber, yes. right? So, while there are stringent fines that are in place, there's 10,000 uh, for natural persons and 50,000 for body corporate, mm-hmm. and then it ranges on to uh, 100,000 for a natural person and 250,000 for a body corporate, which is a, a trader. Mm. for subsequent offences, right? Mm. And it also has uh, imprisonment sentences up to 10 years. Yeah, right? uh, just out of interest, have, have, have people been charged? How many? Is there a large number? or? Well, uh, say in the last uh, year or so, uh, the Commerce Commission collect, uh, collected about $420,000 in fines. And that is when the fines were just $3,000 maximum. Mm. So $3,000 maximum, and we collected about $420,000. Uh, Again, I say, for me, the idea is not to be finding people. The idea, I want uh, businesses to get into ethical business practice. Mm-hmm. For me, this is, we are trying to find long-term solutions. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, yes, we have the fine books and we have the fine mechanisms that are already in place. But uh, so, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Well, you said that, yes, they were, you collected uh, some 400,000 as in yes. uh, charges imposed on them when, when, they, were caught, when they were caught breaching um, the law. Was it uh, a particular business sector or would you... Well, this was um, basically concentrated around the uh, supermarkets, uh, the uh, uh, hardware stores. Mm -hmm. They were the... They made up the bulk of where we collected the money. The supermarkets actually made up most of... uh, And when I say supermarkets and uh, consumer shops, eh? Mm -hmm. so these are other traders that are selling... uh, food items and some non-food items as well. Eh? Any particular area, Greater Suva area, Western Division or Northern Division, just out of interest? Well, uh, uh, usually the main urban centers uh, do mm-hmm. um, give a lot of breaches, yes. uh, especially during the weekends, mm-hmm. right? So we had slightly moved our inspection times because we realized that in the Greater Suva Nasori area, uh, most of the shopping was not being done during the day. So in going and inspecting mm-hmm. shops was no point in doing it mm-hmm. so we actually moved our attention to when people were actually flocking into the supermarket yes. and this was 4 p.m to 9 p.m yeah. so we targeted 4 p.m to 9 p.m we targeted friday evening saturdays we targeted sundays public holidays so a lot of uh, sacrifice by the officers at the commission but we found quite a lot of breaches so supermarkets uh, and shops uh, that were compliant from eight to five um, Monday to Friday, we actually some were found breaching in the evenings and uh, Saturdays. And so we've actually tried to now roll out another program that will ensure that we are able to put up uh, various uh, posters in various shops Mm -hmm. to give numbers to consumers that when they are shopping Mm -hmm. and they find anything suspicious, they can report it immediately. Uh, We're trying to work with Consumer Council and we're trying to work with uh, these larger supermarkets as well to have uh, an internal reporting system. I think this will be of great help to uh, the PG Commerce Commission too. So the commission is also going to work with the economy ministry to set up an economic uh, intelligence unit. So what will be the role of this intelligence unit? Well, uh, the economic intelligence unit, I think it's not going to be too dissimilar from the financial intelligence unit. Uh, The focus here will be actually uh, the financial intelligence unit with, with the Reserve Bank. Yes, there's yes. a financial intelligence unit there. So what it does, it looks at money laundering and mm-hmm. transactions relating to money. Mm. The economic intelligence unit, we anticipate that it will provide forecasting and advisory services through research and analysis. This may include counterinflationary measures. Uh, they'll look at uh, country reports. They might look at uh, economic forecast. They'll look at uh, risk service reports. Mm. And they'll also look at industries, how they actually perform. Uh, they'll look at... Um, uh, this particular, co- you know, w- conduct of uh, initiatives that have uh, that are passing down uh, reductions, but it's caught somewhere in the trap. 
find out exactly where in the trap they are. So we'll be working closely with them because as you would understand the gravity of this exercise, it's a, it's going to be a huge exercise. Mm. It's not going to be something that will be done in a day, right? Yes. It will take time and it will go across various industries, right? The, as I said earlier, the focus will be to go on uh, areas that uh, affect majority of the people. But at the end of it, we want to go and uh, arrest this issue in the market. We want mm. to be able to remove this bad uh, behavior out of the market, this unethical practice. We want to take it out because every day we realize that our Fijian brethren are suffering mm. because somebody is being unethical. And for every one person that is unethical, probably a hundred are suffering. So the idea is to actually pinpoint and try and remove that bad practice out of the market. It's not about removing the person or the business. It's about removing the practice out of the market. Mm -hmm. And that is what the intelligence unit will be doing. It will be providing uh, advisory services. It will look at uh, doing these exercises. It will have powers both from FRCA and the Commerce Commission. So it will be a very powerful unit. Mm -hmm. right? uh, soon after the announcement of this budget, Commerce Commission, uh, it was announced that uh, you are going to be uh, working with different ministries. So yeah. what will your role be with Ministry of Sugar? How will farmers benefit with Commerce, Commerce Commission coming in picture into picture? Well, the, the Commerce Commission actually did a pre-budget exercise in looking at mechanical harvesters. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the last uh, few years, government has put out a total of 240 million to assist farmers, right, into the sugar sector. Uh, and unfortunately, that is the same issue with duty and vet reduction is the same issue with subsidy programs as well. Mm -hmm. Government has given 240 million dollars. If you equate that, that's about two million dollars a month. Mm -hmm. But if you go down to farmers, you'll find that there's somebody in the middle that has uh, that is making some money. I was down in uh, doing one of the consultation with a pharma group in Nalovo Nendi. Uh, they just had uh, 10,000 uh, given for uh, excess roads, right? Uh, and it is in their allocation. And they had to chase around the guy to come in and actually, the guy that owns the grader to actually come in and make the roads. So we had to intervene and uh, go and talk to the guy and put some sense into him. And then eventually the work was, uh, work mm. was done. So what happens is, People they take contracts, they become too complacent, mm -hmm. and this is uh, this is just a, a flow of uh, the ethics of some people. You know, mm -hmm. you can't really uh, by talking to somebody, you can't really know whether they will do this when nobody's looking, and that is the the problem. And with the the sugar industry per se, we looked at uh, how do we reduce the cost of operations. You know, mm -hmm. we looked at mechanical harvesters. The government was uh, subsidizing this, right? And uh, people were charging quite a lot for these things. Now, the whole idea of government assisting in getting these harvesters was that the farmers could benefit, mm -hmm. not that an association or group of people could benefit of this. You know, uh, in fact, uh, it it is. Uh, I get very upset when I see this kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. That there's certain people just beside you that are suffering, but you there are some people who are more on making more money mm -hmm. as opposed to helping somebody in need you know that is not the Fijian way mm. you know that is not how we are but some people are doing this and uh, as in the sugar sector now government has just announced for a subsidy on, on fertilizer as well mm. and there are those people Fijians who look at this and say oh yes I'm, I'm going to receive some assistance mm. and then there are those group of people that say you know they rub their hand and say okay how am I going to profit out of this? So they start devising schemes. Yes. And it's, it's like uh, a system where you put in burglar bars and the thief comes with a bigger pinch bar, uh, ball cutter Rob, to actually... Rob, yes, yeah. <laughs> but so. it's, good, it's good news for uh, farmers that this, this yes. will be strictly monitored. We'll take another break and we'll be back uh, with more questions. And I think it's going to be our last segment on Speak Your Mind. Welcome back to the last segment of Speak Your Mind, and my guest is the CEO of Commerce Commission, Joel Abraham. Uh, the Commerce Commission uh, will be working very closely with the Ministry of Health. So $1 million is allocated for uh, construction of a new kidney research and treatment center. Why has commission been roped in this? And, uh, and, and uh, you'll be working with Ministry of Health and Medical Services. Please explain more on this. Uh, well, sure, Shami. Uh 
and uh, as we've been going and talking about what the commission does maybe the first thing that i'd like to do is and somebody asked me this while we were doing a, some consultation in the sugarcane sector they say what is the commission's business with the sugarcane farmers mm-hmm. let me tell everybody that everybody in fiji is a consumer mm-hmm. and if everybody is a consumer the commission can be anywhere and everywhere mm-hmm. wherever there is a need and specifically with the ministry of uh, health and medical services there's quite a few things that we do there uh pharmaceutical items various medicines are subject to price control mm-hmm. right uh, there actually a list of 75 items then there's a free medicine scheme of government as well right uh what the commission does is we actually go in and assist in the enforcement mm-hmm. to ensure that one if uh things are put on the price control list they're being sold at the right price mm-hmm. right uh you go to certain pharmacies uh you'll see that uh, i give you an example i i have children right mm. uh, i give you an example i can relate to right and a lot of parents might be able to relate to panadol elixir for children mm. right uh usually people go and they say you know i, I want panadol and you get that bottle for 25 30 dollars right a tiny bottle uh why because we go and ask for panadol mm. right panadol has an active ingredient in it called paracetamol if you go and ask for any paracetamol suspension or any paracetamol el- elixirs for children you, i usually buy one that is about this big for 6 dollars and it's it, it tastes better as well mm-hmm. you know because it's got that banana and strawberry flavors mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, what you do is uh, uh, when you take it to the doctors they will tell you it's the same thing there is no difference in it so what the commerce commission has done so one day i went in and i asked my pharmacist said hey how come it? because i was used to paying uh, a higher a higher yeah. price you know 30 dollars 25 dollars 16 dollars 18 dollars so uh and this was just after we had uh, uh, put in some price controls in the pharmaceutical and i asked him i said hey i gave him 50 dollars and he gave me a lot of change back i said i think you've made a mistake with this i mm. think you uh, used to pay more yes yeah. he said no no this is because of uh, commerce commission uh, the price control that has been put in place i said oh okay So, i mean that's a good example of an ethical trader mm. first of all uh, to a lot of people don't realize that uh, there's quite a lot that is being done under the health uh, and medical services banner that is meant to help people uh, you've got people who are earning below 20000 can register for the free medicine scheme we looked at that system we evaluated it and we found that people are just not coming and registering for it mm-hmm. right there's been quite a lot of campaigns done to say you know please come and register uh government has in fact extended it to all pharmacies as well so all pharmacies are also keeping free medicine uh, items mm-hmm. uh then you have price control which is 100% covered so uh, if you can't get free medicine you'll get things under price control mm-hmm. just a question just popped up in my mind is you know when you go to see general practitioners yes. private doctors yes. the prescription which they give which we take to the pharmacies does the price matter in that how does that work how will you monitor that because like you said you were paying $6 of $30 and all of a sudden you ended up paying $6 yes. so is is there a possibility of uh, a private practitioner uh prescribing a medicine which could cost $6 but that would cost $30 is this some kind of uh, yes uh that is something that we are also looking at and uh, like i said we working with minister of health and medical services in certain areas uh, there's some doctors who are in a habit of prescribing the brands right mm. Uh, where where is generic brand could work but uh, really what they're supposed to be uh, prescribing is the medication mm. and when you take it to pharmacies and usually uh, you'll find that pharmacies and doctor surgeries are side by side everywhere yeah. and although they won't say go to this particular because uh, i as a consumer would know i'll only yes. buy what the doctor so usually uh, this is where we encourage our consumers to become uh, more vigilant and exercise mm. their right as consumers remember they have money in their hands so the power is in your hand you know mm. as consumers mm. so when you go you actually ask say you know what is the, what have they prescribed me uh, do you have generics available for this of course the pharmacy should ask you already generics are available do you want it you know uh, there's a difference so there's an originator brand and a generic brand so the way it works is somebody comes up with a formula that will is going to help in uh, you know uh, providing some sort of kiwa so that because of all their research that has gone into this mm. they get a patent or a license for the uh, 20 years that they are only going to produce it and then after that because it is an ethical uh, business line mm. 
Mm. Right? You're supposed to then open it up and anybody then can go and make it. Mm. And that is why, because they don't have any research and development cost, the price is quite low. Mm-hmm. So you will find uh, the generic medication coming out of India, Pakistan, uh, from other source markets, they're quite cheap. Mm-hmm. Right? And the whole idea of getting generic medicine into Fiji was to ensure that people are, are getting uh, that uh, you know cheaper price. Mm-hmm. A good example will be Benadryl cough mixture with, as a, with self-care. Right? Self-care does the same thing that Benadryl does. Mm. is five times cheaper mm-hmm. but sometimes it's a psychological esp- uh, yeah. effect that people have that you know you only have to have that particular brand to get yes, better yes. <laughs> so we'll be smart shoppers uh, and uh, j- just to wrap up uh, Joel uh, now that Commerce Commission has been given so much powers and your role has expanded when it comes to monitoring prices on uh, vet reduced items in a nutshell uh, would you like to tell me how long will it take you to implement all this well, uh, Shami, we've already started doing this. As I said, it was the, we've started pre-budget. We were anticipating something of this sort to happen. Yes, as I said, this is uh, this has been something in the making. Uh, the commission officers, as we speak, they are out gathering data and collecting data, doing field surveys, and this will be again a mammoth task. Uh, we plan on uh, doing it uh, item by item, line okay. by line. Okay. Uh, we're looking at, uh, so I would just uh, let the consumers know to expect some price reductions to be coming your way uh, in the future. And it's not because uh, of the Commerce Commission, it's because of the incentives government has been giving. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Joel, for coming on the show. Thank and you. so we have good news for you with this, with the announcement of the 2017-2018 national budget. There'll be more money in your pockets. So um, it's a wrap-up for this show. I'll be having another guest next week uh, on Tuesday on Speak Your Mind. Till then, goodbye and see you again next week on Gold FM Speak Your Mind. (laughs) 